the brave armies of Greece and Troy were locked in a long, bitter war. The Trojans had captured a beautiful Greek princess named Helen and held her within their fortress city of Troy. It did not seem possible that any man could break into the fortress city of Troy. For days, weeks, months, the Greek soldiers from their camp on a beach near the city assaulted the walls of Troy, but they were always beaten back. Then Ulysses, a great leader of the Greeks, said to his men, I have a plan. It is dangerous, but if it works, the Trojans themselves will take us through the gates of their city. At the order of Ulysses, the Greek soldiers set to work cutting down huge trees, making the wood into planks. From the towers of Troy, the Trojan soldiers watched a big building grow taller and taller day by day until it was six stories high. And when the Greeks pulled away all the work ladders and scaffolds, there stood a huge wooden horse, 80 feet tall. the towering walls of Troy, the soldiers and the people gathered to look out across the plain at the great wooden horse. They wondered what it was for, what it meant. The Trojans did not know that Ulysses and five Greek soldiers lay hidden in a dark secret passage inside the wooden horse. All through the night, fire blazed brightly on the beach. The Greeks were burning their tents just as if they were giving up their camp and sailing back home. When morning came, not a Greek ship or soldier remained. But where they had camped stood the great Trojan horse. The Trojan people poured out of the city to the beach so they could look more closely at the structure over the Greeks. The Princess Cassandra, daughter of the king of the Trojans, warned her people of this Greek gift, but no one would listen. The Trojans decided to pull the great horse inside the walls into the city of Troy itself. The Trojans tied thick ropes around the legs of the huge wooden horse. Hundreds of men took a hand at the ropes. Others lined up behind the horse. Whooping and hollering, laughing at the Greeks who had never been able to scale the towering walls of Troy, the Trojans tugged and pushed and pulled the huge wooden horse slowly from the beach, over the plains, and through the gates of Troy. In the dark, secret passage of the wooden horse, Ulysses and the five soldiers lay quietly waiting. They could feel the horse being moved. What the Trojans had decided to do, neither Ulysses nor his soldiers knew. Suddenly, after a whole day and half a night, the Trojan horse moved no more. An hour passed. Still the horse did not move. Ulysses gave a signal. The soldiers felt their way silently down the dark, secret passage, following Ulysses. Cautiously, he opened the trap door. Just as he hoped, the Trojans had brought the horse inside the walls of Troy. The city was sleeping now, and the walls were unguarded. Ulysses drew his sword. He ordered the soldiers to follow, and he dashed for the main gates of the city. The Greek soldiers quickly tied the sleeping Trojan guards while Ulysses scampered up the sentry tower. Holding a torch high above his head, he signaled to the Greek army, which had turned around and sailed back to the beach during the night. And even as Ulysses and his men opened the gates of Troy, the Greek army was marching across the plain. Caught completely by surprise, the Trojans were easily defeated by the Greek soldiers who found their beautiful princess and took her back safely to Greece. And brave Ulysses was named the greatest of the Greek heroes.
name is Jim Hawkins, and I have a story to tell. A story of adventure. It all began with a map. This map showed the location of an island and buried treasure. Men were setting off on a ship to find the treasure, and I was to go along as cabin boy. An old sailor with a wooden leg got together a crew. He was our cook, and gee, I liked him right off. Oh, what a funny name. I'll never forget it. Long John Silver. We worked all one night getting the ship ready to sail. The whole crew worked and worked and worked. And just before dawn, we were ready to sail. We were on our way to Treasure Island. Once at sea, we all had a fine time. Long John Silver especially was lots of fun. Golly, he used to sit and tell me stories by the hour. It sat on his shoulder and screamed. Now, there was a barrel of apples set out for the men. And one night, I went to get myself an apple, but because they were almost all gone, I had to climb right into the barrel to get one, right down to the bottom. Then a strange thing happened. Just as I was about to climb out, I heard voices. Uh, keep your eye peeled for that. It was Long John Silver and some of the crow. No, Milanese, you're a smart lot. No need for us to return empty-handed. We'll come back with all the treasure for ourselves. Gosh, these men were pirates. But I knew their secret if only they didn't discover me. See ya, mateys. Have an apple. But just as Long John was reaching into the barrel... Hello? went ashore. Loyal crewmen in one group, pirates in another, all looking for the treasure. Pretty soon I was all alone in the jungle when all of a sudden, from behind a tree jumped, the strangest man you ever did see. <laughs> he was laughing and laughing and laughing. And all at once he stopped. Who are you? M -m My name is Jim Hawkins, sir. Well, I'm old Ben Gum, and you're a pirate, aren't you? Oh, no, sir, no. Well, I know that pirates are here looking for my treasure, but they won't find it. I've lived in this island for three years, hiding that treasure. They won't find it, no. <laughs> no, they won't. Keep the bait! Keep the bait! Long John Silver! Yes, me artists, it's Long John and me crew. And now, Ben Gunn, take us to that treasure. Long John and his pirates had surrounded us. Ben would just have to take them to the treasure now. Our only chance was to have the loyal crew find us before we reached it. Ben Gunn took us to the far side of the island and pointed to a cave. <laughs> I'm afraid you've done a scene, Long John. Right, are, and the treasure's mine. Long John grabbed a hook and started to pry open one of the chests when... What's that? Our loyal crew was fighting the pirates. Long John and his men were captured. The treasure was safe. Our men tied up Long John and his pirates and then loaded the treasure aboard our ship. Diamonds and pearls and silver and gold and every treasure you could think of. So much that we just couldn't carry it all. So today, if you should happen across an island and find a cave, you too might find buried treasure, because that's treasure all.